see the word which produces faith, and faith pleases God. I'm not just a hearer of the word, I'm a doer of the word. This word, shout that thing, I am. Hallelujah. Remain standing, if you would. Go to Revelation, <laughs> chapter 5. Revelation, chapter number 5, and verse number 9. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, I have it. If you're still flipping, say, hold on, Bishop. All right, one, two, hold on. Here we go. And they sang a new song. Look at somebody say a new song. Here's what the song said. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us. Okay, your neighbor can't read, so. I'm going to say it again. And you have made us, which means God says, I'm not asking you if you want to be. I'm not consulting you. I'm not having a board meeting about it. God says, you don't get to be average in your life. You don't get to be a loser in your life. You don't get to be a nobody in your life. He says, I have made him to be kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> One more place. Go to Psalm 98 1. Psalm 98 1. The, the new song they were singing was, I'm no longer a victim. I'm no longer a failure. I'm no longer a mistake. I'm no longer an accident. The new song says, the new song says, he has made me to be a king and a priest. Uh, God isn't consulting you to ask whether or not you feel like that. He has made you that. Psalm 98, 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. Father, I decrease that you might increase. Speak through me with the simplicity of the word that it is time for a new song to arise in the lives of your people. The song is that you have made us to be greater than what we've gone through. The song is you have made us to be greater than our circumstances. The song is you have made us to be greater than people that are going under. You have made us overcomers. And so we thank you for it. We declare a new song is going to rise up out of this house today. I just need a few faith people. I said we declare a new song is rising up out of this house today. And it is so in Jesus' name. As you take your seat, time five, two or three people and say a new song, a new song, a new song. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, say it again, say new song. Uh, according to the dictionary, there are several definitions for the word song, but the one I like the most that speaks and is most apropos to what I'm ministering today, it means a distinctive or characteristic sound, which means a song is more than just words and music put together. It is a characteristic or a distinctive sound that when you look at a, pers a certain situation, a certain uh, person, or a certain circumstance, that that sound is being made. Have, have you ever looked at somebody and it was written all over their face? what was going on in their lives. Even though they weren't opening their mouths, they were still singing a song because it was projecting an image. Are you still here? In Scripture, the concept of a new song came from the children of Israel repeating the same old song about how their lives were going. You know people like this. Everything is always bad. They've always got a negative report. Everything is always the sky is falling. Everything is always woe is me. I had such a rough life. Oh, look at what happened to me. Oh, Bishop, you don't know how they betrayed me. Baby, everybody's been betrayed. Everybody's had a Judas. There's nothing special about you that exempts you from it. Say new song. Uh, the, 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 watch this, watch this. The, the phrase, you, you've heard it, song and dance. It's an idiom, which is a figure of speech. It, it, it means this. It means if someone makes a song and dance, it makes, means they make an unnecessary fuss about something unimportant. You, you, you know people like this, that, 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 that in the moment something's going on, they got to let everybody know something's happening. 
You, you know people like this. They are drama kings and queens. Everything is drama. I mean, they can't have a normal day with anybody. They come in with drama. They have drama at lunch. They go on break with drama. They leave work with drama to get in their car, to get on the phone to talk about the drama, to go home and have some more drama. That's a song and a dance. Uh, the second uh, definition for this idiom, song and dance, it means an elaborate story or effort to explain and justify something that is lacking. You, you, you know, you, you, you go over to a friend's house and you say, hey, man, when, when, when are you going to get this together? Oh, you know, I just, they got the same song and dance. It's the same old excuses for why things are the way they are and why they are choosing to be less than what God has made them be. And the third definition for the idiom song and dance, it means the same old routine. See, the children of Israel, they were so used to singing the song of slaves and the songs of victims that they could never get a new song in their mouth. In Numbers, we didn't read it, but we talked about it in last service. In Numbers chapter 13, uh, ten, uh, 12 spies go out to spy up the land uh, of the promised land. It was the land of Canaan. The Bible says it was a land that flowed with milk and honey. It was a land that God had promised them. And only two of them came back with a new song. Only two of them came back with a good report. And the good report was, we are well able to take the land. No matter who's in the land, if God promised it, it is for me. See, where are the people that said, what God has for me it is for me and if God be for me who can be against me man I got a new song ten people may have a bad song ten people may have a bunch of complaining but I got a new song in my spirit that says if God is for me nobody tell somebody say a new song a new song they, 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 every time the children of Israel could have advanced, they retreated. They kept singing the old song. Every time they could have taken a risk, they stood back in the place of complacency because they did not want to experience any loss. I was watching it last night on TV, and they said it. It's a prophetic word for somebody. On the movie Transformers, they said, if there's no sacrifice, there's no victory. See, the reason some of you aren't seeing any victories in your life is because you're not willing to take a risk and step out anymore. And you're so scared that you're going to fail. I'm here to tell you this is a brand new day. And God has brand new mercies for you. I may have failed yesterday, but today I got a I wish. I got brand new mercy in my life, which means I'm not going to judge today by yesterday's failure. Be seated. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Songs. Songs are formed based on past experiences, mostly negative ones. I'll use the same ones I used last service. Uh, Garth Brooks says, don't break my heart. My achy, breaky heart. Here he is writing a whole song about how some woman broke his heart, and he's telling the new woman, please don't do me like Sheila Nim did me. If your name's Sheila, I'm just using a random example. <laughs> Let me just, purple. Don't do me like purple did me. If your name's purple, then just follow where I'm going. Here he is complaining about how his heart is broken. So you know what he does? He sings about it. So you know the song he sings to every new woman he meets? It's Don't Break My Heart. My achy, breaky heart. And you know what he ends up doing? He ends up turning her into her. Let me say it another way. He ends up turning this into that because he refused to have a new song. We sing some crazy songs because they're, they're based off of bad past experiences. We sing songs like, nobody's supposed to be here. How did you get here? Now, here's my question, woman. Now, do you want a man or not? If he got close enough to you to love him, then he's there. Don't quit asking how he got there. He there. We sing songs like, I should have cheated. No, you should have been faithful and did your part and let God handle all of that. See, I, I'm just trying to figure out where the new song people are that are saying, I've had enough of that. If you listen to a lot of the music that we experience today, it's the same old tired song. Every time a new female artist comes out in the R&B, I already know what she's going to talk about. How she been lied to, how a man cheated on her, how somebody did her wrong, but she good. She don't need no man because she's independent. All my ladies holler about She got all this going on. 
Every time a new blues or country song come out, I know what they're going to talk about, how bad it is. Oh, man, the economy. I already know what they're getting ready to talk about because it's the same old song. I wish you'd touch somebody and say it's time for a new song. Time. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. A bad song is hard to get rid of because a bad song plays in your mind over and over and over and over again. I, I told them this morning uh, about uh, their song came out some years ago, and the song was Baby Don't Hurt Me. Y you know it. <laughs> Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. What is love? Whoa, whoa. hate that song. That's a strong word. All hate means is a stronger version to. I don't like it now. I didn't like it when it came out. But you know what I found? Even though I didn't like it, I continued to sing it. That's why for some of you, when I'm saying it's time for a new song, you're struggling receiving this word because you're so used to saying you're so comfortable and familiar with the foolishness of that old stuff that it's difficult to let it go because you got to let the old thing go for something new. And the problem is you don't quite know where new is. God is doing some of you like Abraham. He's saying, go to a place called there. Well, what is, what's the name of it? There. Uh, you'll know when you get there because I'll tell you. Half have somebody say, you're in a new song. You're in a new song. You're in a new song. You're, you're, you're in a new song. Now, 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 now watch this, watch this, watch this. God never asks for an old song. Sing unto the Lord an old, antiquated, outdated song, for he has done marvelous things. No, God never asks you for an old song because he's always moving forward. Listen, so what's an old song? It's making the same old excuses for why things aren't the way that they should be and being comfortable with it. See, this is a message today to challenge you. You know, I figured out the people that have a problem with Bishop Foreman. The people that have a problem with Bishop Foreman are people that like to sing old songs. Because, because see, watch this. When you start singing a new song, people around you, they're either they're going to come with you or they're going to get left behind. Because everybody doesn't like to be victorious. Everybody doesn't like to be out of their misery. Some people want to be preached to about how to manage their misery rather than overcome their ministry, misery. But I think there's some people in the house today that say, I don't want to manage no foolishness. I want to come out of that junk. Half have two people say a new song, a new song, a new song. Ah! Ah! He says, I don't want an old song. Because I'm always moving forward. Isaiah 43, behold, I do a new thing. God is never repeating the same old movie. You ever been to a movie and you already know, you can pretty much tell what's getting ready to happen? There's certain movies. Now, I love movies. There's certain movies I don't know, I don't even see. Because I look at the people in the movie, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. Oh, okay. No, she's going to fall. Then after she falls, the killer's going to all of a sudden catch up. Because he was way back, he was a mile and a half away. But when she falls, all of a sudden, time is going to, you, you already know what's getting ready to happen. God says, I'm not interested in your old song. Why? Because when you got up this morning, I had a brand new plan. And can I help somebody? God says, your failures and your issues do not interrupt my plan. You touch somebody and say, you're right on schedule. You're right on the See, Satan wants you to think that because you've messed up, God took you off the track. I'm here to tell you, God says you're still on track, and the plan is still working. But he says, I don't want a new, uh, an old song. He, he, says, he says this, though, too. He says, I, I, I don't want the same song. I found out people that have a problem with harvest, people that want to sing the same old crazy Christian song. Oh, the devil is busy. The devil is busy. I don't know why I'm broke. My family is a mess, but blessed to be God. That is not the song of the kingdom. The song of the kingdom is he's made me a king and a priest, which means I have dominion over everything the devil got going on. I'm not in a fight with the devil. I'm in a fight with understanding who I am. I found out people that have a problem with harvest. They're, they're people that like to sing the same old religious song. 
And they'll just sing it in different places, but it's the same old song because it's comfortable. It's comfortable being average. It's comfortable being preached to that it's all right not to succeed. It's all right not to conquer. It's all right. Just God gives you grace. Yes, he gives you grace. But at some point, I want to be able to stand up and say, look at what God has done in my life. I, I understand I got grace and mercy, but at some point, I want to be a king and a priest. At some point, I want to have some victory. At See, I found out the people that have a problem with harvest. They're, they're people that like the same old religious song. Turn around three times, you're coming out. No, you're not. You're not until you change. Get ready, get ready. Get ready for what? Get ready to figure out who you are. Because when you figure out who you are, it will change what you do. I tell you, have to have somebody say a new song, a new song. God never asked for the same old song because God's always doing a new and better thing in your life. Stop looking at who walked out. God tried to upgrade you, and you sitting there trying to hold on to the old version. God says, I got a Windows 7, friend, for you, and you trying to hold on to XP. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Oh, Bishop, they left me. Baby, that's because they were Windows 95. Let them go. Anybody that wants to walk out of my life, got an announcement for you. There's the door. I ain't never put a lock on it. Why? Because I refuse to be stuck with the same old song. Touch your neighbor and say, he's upgrading me. He's upgrading me. Whenever God tries to upgrade you, stop holding on to yesterday's garbage. That's called a old song. It's called the same song. See, see, some Christians are still singing the same song about how great things were. Oh, man, I tell you, back in 94, my life was really good. Well, it is now 2011. It's time for a brand new song. Because if you stay stuck in yesterday, you're never going to be able to do anything today. My question is, what has he done for you lately? Okay, watch this. The reason I have a new song in my spirit is because he's done some new things for me. And while I'm thankful for what he was doing last year, I'm not going to be so foolish to miss what he did today. Oh, I wish there were some people in here that understood a new song. What has he done for you lately? He, he, he doesn't ask for an old song. He doesn't ask for the same song. Then he doesn't ask for a bad song. That, that's why he says, sing unto the Lord a new song. See, you wouldn't have to say new song if every song was acceptable. The only reason to make a differential here is because God says, every song you sing is not acceptable to me. I, I want to hear a bad song. I, I gave this analogy to them this morning. Uh, wh wh if, if, if you're a parent and every time your child came to you, they were coming to you with complaints. Uh, Mama, when are we going to do something about this, uh, about this food? Uh, Mama, when, when are we going to do something about these clothes? M Mama, when are, we gonna do some when are you going to do something about your car? I'm tired of getting dropped off in front of school and the smoke coming out the back, and I got to run. I tell people, you my auntie. <laughs> Watch this. If a child says that to a parent, even though the parents got to be tough, the parent is going to subconsciously begin to think, I'm doing an inadequate job with them. Watch this. When you sing a bad song, oh, woe is me, oh, woe is my life, oh, 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 the sky's falling. When you sing a bad song, God says, I take offense to it. Because you're talking about the job I'm doing. No, I, I, maybe they get it on this side of the church. God, God says, when you sing a bad song, I take a fitch to it because you are criticizing what I'm doing in your life. And the only reason that you're not seeing the victory you want is because you're the one keeps singing the old song and getting mad at me. You're the one that can press play and pause. Somebody say a new song. Now, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I, I found out, I found out that when you get a new song, 
Don't be surprised when people with an old song, the same song, or a bad song, hate you for your new song. When you get a new song, you're going you're gonna to aggravate some people around you. You're going to aggravate the people around you that like being mediocre. You're, you're going to aggravate the people around you that don't want to have no joy. Hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. No, shut your mouth and realize that it's a new song. Touch your neighbor and say, don't hate me because of my song. Don't, don't hate me. Don't, don't hate me because of my song. No, 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 no. I, I know you want to sit and sulk and all that. Don't you hate me because of my song. I know you want to sit there and complain about the world and all that, and your Obama and Republicans and this. I don't have nothing to say about that. I'm not a citizen of the United States of America. I read my Bible, and my Bible says I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, which, which means I'm not subject to what they got going on anyhow. Look at somebody say it's time for a new song, time for a new song. Now, some of you, watch this, you're going to have to fight for a new song. Because the old song is comfortable. That's why we sing it. It's comfortable. You know it. You, you know the chorus. You know the hook. You know the vamp. You, you know everything about the song. I mean, even some Christian songs we sing. Yes, well, we don't sing this song that much. Jesus can work it out. We don't sing that that much here. You know why? Because I think that's stupid. No, I do. Uh, uh, light bill due, telephone due, light bill disconnect, great number next paycheck. But you sit up in here and say your God is the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All the gold is his, all the silver is his. But you, we, we, we got a problem. Some of you are going to have to fight for a new song because your existing song, it's comfortable. You're familiar with it. You're familiar with, with, with saying, oh, that's just how my family is. You're familiar with saying, oh, that's just how my spouse is. You're singing the same old song. Oh, that's just how my kids are. The same old song. Oh, nothing ever works out for me. The same old song. Oh, every job I seem to get, it just something goes wrong. The same old song. And God says, I'm sick of hearing it. I'm ready for a new song. That's why the psalmist said, sing unto the Lord a new song. But the second reason that some of you are going to have to fight for a new song is because you're afraid of a new song because you want to prevent disappointment. I found out that many times the people that are scared to step out in faith, scared to have a new song, are the people that have been disappointed before. Because whenever you've been disappointed before, you will have an immediate uh, distinction or understanding or proclivity to believe that I might step out and it may not work like it didn't last time. Uh, look even at the American music scene. Some of the music or computer programming they got today, because it's not really music, as long as you know how to program a computer, you can make songs today. But, but now watch this. Think, think about it. Uh, they were willing to take risks, and the risks they took became the new music. Because if you had the stuff that, we li that people play and listen to today, that stuff wouldn't have worked 40 years ago. Y'all not saying nothing. Y'all not saying nothing, because we had groups back in the day. Yeah, y'all ain't saying nothing. Did it? And they had dance steps that went with the songs back in the day. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And when they sang that song, they meant that song. And they, they were talking about love back in the day. And, and not loving multiple women. They talking about loving the right women. And so Lenny said, girl, you know I, I, I love you. And so he wanted her to know. Then he starts preaching in the song. If it's in, God's will. When last time you looked at somebody and say, I want to be with you, if it's in, God's will. Because the difference between a Judas and a John is timing. That's too much. John was the beloved. Judas was the betrayer. The difference between the two is the timing and your ability to recognize the two. Judas and John sold up at the same time. They reveal themselves in different time. See, a John will take longer to reveal than a Judas. 
Okay, this is too much for y'all. Okay, the, uh, okay, y- y- y'all can't handle that. Y'all can't handle that. You, you, you got to fight for a new song. Say, say, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> because, because it's comfortable. It's familiar. I, and I don't want to be disappointed in the future. I've, I've been let down before. I've, I've been hurt before. I don't, I don't want to sing a new song. And God says, that's all the song we listen to. Some of you are saying, it seems like God's not listening to me. Well, because he turns the station when the song keeps repeating. <laughs> Feels like God is far from me. God says, because you're playing the same song. you like 107.5. You play the same song every four minutes. <laughs> Didn't I hear this seven times this morning? They said, y'all are supposed to be Christian, so how y'all listen? Okay, my sis. Touch your neighbor say, what's your new song about? Now, it'd be foolish of us to talk about a new song and not define what a new song is about, not define what a new song looks like. So we already looked at it in Revelation chapter 5. He says, and they sang a new song. Say new song. Saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God. So the first part of my new song has got to be the fact that I have been redeemed. And every part of me has been redeemed. What does redeemed mean, Bishop? It means bought back. I know you don't feel redeemed because when life starts hitting you, you're trying to figure out, God, if if you're here, why is this going on? God, if you're with me, why is this happening? But you need to understand the words in my new song say, I have been redeemed. Everything about me has been purchased and bought back, which means I don't get to run my life. I got to let God run my life, which means I don't get to say where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. No, I got to let the one that owns me. Wouldn't it be crazy if your car started telling you where it was going to go? So first part of my new song says I've been redeemed. Every part of me has been bought back. My mind, my thoughts, my will, my emotions, my nuances, my proclivities, everything about me, he has purchased with a price. Which means, watch this, Bishop, what does that mean? It means that I don't get to be my own God. There is only one that gets to tell me what to do, and his name is Jesus to Christ. And if the word of God says it, I don't have no opinion on the matter. But the second part of my new song, it, it, it says, By your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and you have made us kings and priests. So the second part of my new song is a p- place where I step into identity. The problem we have in our society today is, is not a faith problem. It is not a, it is not a seed-sowing problem. It is none of that. The problem we have is an identity crisis. Identity theft, I think it's interesting, so in the natural, so in the spiritual. Identity theft is the number one crime, uh, according to many statistics, uh, in the United States of America and around the world. It is where another person becomes another person for the benefit of getting what they perceive the other person to have. You missed it. I said it so fast. One person becomes another person in order to receive what they perceive to be the benefit of becoming the other person. That's called identity theft. So many saints are dealing with identity issues because they don't understand that they're kings and priests. So they live like poppers and they live like average folk. Paul even exhorts the Corinthian church. He says, you're behaving like mere humans. God, 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 God says, I have made you to be a king. What, a, what does a king do? A king rules over the societal systems. Come on, let's say it together. You know all seven. Come on. Arts and entertainment. Come on. That's what a king does. And what does a priest do? A priest goes to God and has clear communication with God. Which means God says, I don't want you to just be so uh, natural and you got all this stuff going on in the natural world, but you don't know how to interact with me. You, you, you know people like that, that they got stuff in the natural world and they got it down. But when it comes to the spirit, they just lack it. God says, I, I don't want that. God says, I, I want you to be both a king and a priest. See, see the origin, can I teach just for a moment? The origin of the word king and priest comes from the Hebrew word Melchizedek. It's a joint word, which means the same man is operating in two dimensions at the same time. Let me say it another way. The same man in him is two dimensions at the same time, which means sitting in you right now, there is a king in you and there is a priest in you. That's why when you get low, you don't feel comfortable there. You don't feel comfortable there because that king on the inside of you is saying, come up a little bit higher. There's got to be some more. 
So that's my new song. Now, 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 now watch this. Then it says, and we shall reign on the earth. Uh, hear me. He does not say we shall die, go to heaven, and reign. No. Mm -mm. It says, and we shall reign. Well, when are we on the earth? So when are we supposed to reign? Which means God says, your new song goes like this. You change from pain. Come on, y'all know how to rhyme. To reign. I exchange my pain in order to reign. I, I exchange my chaos in order to reign. I exchange my issues in order to reign. I want, I got a lot of reasons to be worried. I got a lot of reasons to have a bad attitude. Got a lot of reasons to be negative. But I exchange that for the opportunity to reign. Have you ever noticed that kings don't get the opportunity to complain? You're not hearing what I'm saying. It's amazing to me. I even look at our, our, our government here in America. Of course, we don't have a monarchy. We have a, well, they call it a demo, um, democracy. Uh -huh. And so it's amazing to me because I sit back sometimes and think, uh, not just the current president, any president, I say, how did they take all that? I said, they're sitting up. It ain't like the people are talking behind their back. They get on national cable television. And we'll talk about you to you and lie. And then stand up in the halls of Congress and call you a lie. And he just, that's why I couldn't be president. Because I'm working out my salvation. No, you, you, you must not understand what I'm saying. Let me talk to the thug side of the church. You must understand what I'm saying. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. See, I wouldn't respond that way. I would have said, cut the camera off. Everybody be seated. It's the United States of America. People disappear all the time. That's the old me, the old me, the old me, the old me, the old me. This is what are you trying to say? Nothing. It's a joke. That's the extent of what I'm saying. But I, I couldn't be president. But watch this. Kings understand, even look at what's happening in the Middle East now, and, and people, are, people are protesting and going crazy and, and all this kind of thing, and, and, and the kings are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, and all that. Uh, uh, uh. They're dealing with all of this pressure and these issues. One, one of the kings said, fine, I'll go. One of the other kings in, in, in that region said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing right here. The only way you're getting me out is in a body bag. But Bishop, what are you trying to say? A king unto the Lord and a priest unto the Lord doesn't care who or what is opposing them. They act like they don't even hear it. I'm just trying to find out where the kings are at. I, I'm just, uh, see, the kings will, will hear the report and say, oh, oh, that's great, that's fine, but I still got to move forward. I, I don't care about who don't like it, who's talking about me. See, if you really want to reign in life, you got to get over petty stuff. You, you got to get over little petty and stuff. If you really want to reign in life, you're going to have to develop a thick skin. A song, song, song. Am I helping anybody? A, a song involves three parts. Three parts I went through. Uh, first song, first part of a song is a song creates an atmosphere. Uh, you, you, you have noticed how certain music creates a certain atmosphere? Let, let me, can I talk to the married folk for a minute? No, I'm, talk, I'm talking to the married people. No, I better not even do it then. Just it would be difficult to create an atmosphere of intimacy. Oh, I cleaned it up good. <laughs> Listen to Jesus will work it out. Y'all on it. I'm talking to married people. It'd be difficult, married people, to create an atmosphere of intimacy. Talking about for every mountain. 
You brought me up. Thank you. And your husband said, look at you. Married people I'm speaking to. Okay, everybody come back to the church. Now, here we go. Songs create atmospheres. Say atmospheres. So, so here's the question then. Are you a thermometer or a thermostat? Do you set the environment or does the environment set you? Do, do you let your circumstances set the environment around you so when something bad goes on, it puts you in a bad mood? Or do you stand up and say, wait a minute, I got a new song. And a new song says, I'm not responding to the circumstances. I set the atmosphere. Did you get bad news? Sure did, but my atmosphere, I got a new song. They told you they don't want to be with you anymore. They sure did, but I got my atmosphere set. I got a brand new song in my spirit. There are certain atmospheres that causes impossibilities to become possible. I said this this morning. Uh, there were certain people that Jesus did not heal. Scripture says he did so many great things that the books of the world could not contain it all. But he, he did give us enough, though, to get an understanding. The understanding was is he didn't heal everybody. There were certain people that Jesus walked right by and said nothing to. Bishop, why? Because the atmosphere that they created was not conducive for the impossible. Jesus, I need you to get it. The atmosphere they created was not conducive for the impossible. So when Jesus walks up, Jesus, I, listen, I'm not coming to hear that same old song you sitting up here talking. I didn't ask you how long you've been sitting by the pool. I asked you, did you want to be made whole? <laughs> Say atmosphere. Then there are certain atmospheres that impede everything. You, you ever been around an individual that when you get around them, you, you, it's just like, okay, I don't even want to be here. They don't have to open their mouths and say anything. The song that projects to the atmosphere, it turns the atmosphere sour. So everybody having a good time at family dinner until they show up. Okay, y'all don't want to. Okay, let, let, let's, uh, let's move. Say atmosphere. So, so that means I set the atmosphere with a new song. Now, 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 now. Second part to a song is the attitude. You've heard this saying, your attitude determines your altitude. Now, now, now watch this. This is so important because this is very pragmatic. Because when I say new song, most people think singing in tongues. And that's great, but, but that's not the extent of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? H hear me. Your attitude determines your altitude. Poor attitude, low altitude. Good attitude. High altitude. You know why? Let me help some of you understand why you haven't gotten promoted on your job. Because you have a bad attitude. And even though you're more skilled than everybody else, they don't want to have to deal with you. But Bishop, what are you trying to say? Prayer, praise, fasting, talent, gifting, good looks, skills, physical ability cannot make up for a bad attitude. There's people now that used to be in your life. They're in your yesterday. And the reason they're in your yesterday is because they have a bad attitude. Every time you talk to them, it's like, oh, God, I ain't going to deal with so-and-so. You got to put on the full armor of God just to have a conversation. And sometimes you get sick of having to fight. See, see, there, there, there's some folks I don't even want to fool with because I get sick of having to fight. I don't want to have to come fight every atmosphere I get in. Sometimes I just want to be able to come, set my helmet of salvation over here, put my breastplate of righteousness over here, take my shield of faith, take my feet prepared with the preparation of the gospel. I want to take that stuff off sometime and just relax. But if I got to fight all the time, I just must rather not be bothered. You need the God kind of attitude. Bishop, what is the God kind of attitude? I told them this morning, it, it's, a, it's a marine attitude. Yeah. Hoorah. 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 The, the, God, the God kind of attitude says, rather than stand here and cuss at the darkness, I'm going to just turn on the light. Rather than stand here and talk about how bad my kids are and how bad my life is, how about I just make some changes? Rather than stand here and curse the darkness, why don't I light a candle? Can't find a candle? Get a nightlight. Can't get a nightlight? Get you a solar power lamp. Take it out when the days are good and prepare for when the days are done. I'm talking to some people in the house that said, I've had enough of the old song in my life. There's a new song rising up. And if you believe it, I dare you to give God praise in the house. I got a new song. Got a new song. Got a new song. Got a new attitude. I thought somebody said new attitude.
In Genesis, God could have walked in and said, Revelation 12, we know what was going on in the earth. Revelation 12 tells us that Satan had been cast down to the earth. Jesus saw him fall from heaven like lightning, not just Satan, but one third of the angelic host now fell with him. So on the earth now is chaos and Satan is running rampant. So when Genesis begins, Genesis is not the beginning of the beginnings, it's the beginning of this beginning. Got to come to Bible college and about that kind of stuff. And so, so, so God could have said, oh, look at all these problems. Oh, look at all this darkness. Oh, look at all these issues. Oh, what am I going to do? But he knew he was king of kings. He knew he was what he made you, a king and a priest. Since he knew that, you know what he did? He said, let there be. Which means sometimes you're going to have to fight for a new song by calling things that are not as so they were. Sometimes you're going to have to lay hands on your shop and say, I command you to be healed. You're walking in divine healing. Sometimes you're going to have to lay hands on your children and say, I know you're acting like a little hell raiser, but God is going to make something out of you. You're going to serve the Lord. God is going to get the glory out of your life. He, he, he didn't curse the darkness. First thing he says is, let there be light. God had a good attitude. Jesus, when Jesus was healing people, I told you already, he didn't heal everybody he came in contact with. He only healed those that created the atmosphere. See, they had a new song. So now we find that Jesus, when he goes to people, he doesn't spend any time talking about the problem. Some of you, when you pray, you're not praying. You are giving a CNN Anderson Cooper 360 report. God, you know, this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. That's why the scripture says he already knows what you have need of before you open your mouth. Which means when I pray, I'm not praying to give him a report. I'm praying to come in agreement with what he said about the report. Which means I don't pray, oh, Lord, it's bad. Oh, Lord, my kid. No, 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 no. What I say is, Lord, your word promised me. By your stripes, I was healed. So until I see healing, I'm going to keep singing a new song. He, 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 he says to them, what's the solution? See, see, see God's kind of attitude is this kind of attitude. Get her done. Say it with me. Say, get her done. Get her done. That, that, that's the kind of attitude God has. And that's the kind of attitude God expects you to have. Not a bunch of excuses and whining and complaining. I know this kind of message. So you old song people, you already got a problem with this message. That's cool. But, but bitch, if you don't understand, I don't have to. You're not the only one that's been hurt. You're not the only one that's been through something. You're not the only one that's been lied on. You're not the only one that's been sick. You're not, you're not the only one. Stop letting the devil sit up there and tell you you're the only one. You are not alone. Look at your neighbor and say, we're in the same boat, man. We're in the same. Yeah, you ain't the only one. We're all drinking the same Kool-Aid. What's the flavor? Red. I know y'all got a little country in you because red is not a flavor. Thank you, Jesus. Third part, and I'm done, of my new song. So remember, remember, first part is my atmosphere. Second part is my attitude. So if you got bad attitude, just change it. Sometimes I'm working on it. No, you're not. No, just change it. You, you don't work on that. Just change it. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. It's this simple. When, when, when you turn the radio on and something's on you don't want to hear, what would you do? Change it. You, you don't pray it away, Father, in the name of Jesus. I do, oh, I'm going to help your neighbor. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord, please, 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 Jesus. I'll change the song. You don't pray it away. You change it. Some of you struggling with bad atmosphere and bad attitudes. No, you don't need to pray that away. You need to just change it. Just change it. When your, when your car is getting ready to run gas, and some of you probably do pray. <laughs> Lord Jesus, please let these 35 cents I put in this tank, just let it stretch in the name of it. I should have filled back up at the last stop, but I was just trusting you, Jesus. Go 
through the Conoco and fill your cup. We've all done it. So now let's not sit up it. We've all done it. You taking the rental car back and you're trying to get it back just because you don't want to give them no more money until so you. Okay, all right. I'm not the only one, so you don't look at me with that tone of voice. Third thing, third thing, and I'm through. My new song has to celebrate new victories. New victories. Bishop, what, what, what do you mean new victories? The greatest enemy to tomorrow's success is yesterday's. Because, watch this, you, you, you can tell people that got an old song because they're always sitting there talking about how good things used to be in their life. Oh, man, back in the day, man, I said this this morning. If you're talking about I used to be fine. Ooh, when I was in college, honey, I was it. Man, you're telling your buddies, man, remember I used to be starting quarterback. But we also, I don't know emails, I ain't going to say it. That's an old song. Oh, man, remember how good. It wasn't that good. You know I know? Because it ain't here no more. If it was that good. Ooh, remember, remember, remember my first love? They don't remember you. They four husbands later and eight kids. Watch this. My new song says, I thank God for everything he's done in the past. I thank him for what he's doing today. But I know there's some new victories that I have yet to experience, which, which means I'm not going to get stuck on what he did. I'm going to celebrate him for what he's doing and what I know he's going to do. Why? Because I've got a new song in my spirit. I can't get stuck there. Can't, 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 get, can't get stuck on an old song. You baby don't hurt me. <laughs> when I started, when the Lord spoke this to me, uh, and to, to minister this today, that's the first song that came to my mind. I hate that song. Did I tell y'all that? I really don't like that song. Because I don't understand what they're talking about. And so you got an old song, so everybody you meet, you sing your song to. You meet somebody new. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt. I got trust issues. I don't know if I can trust you no more. My last girlfriend left me. I was standing with no more. What is love? Y'all didn't know. I could, I'm in the Colorado Gospel Music Hall of Fame. Y'all didn't know. I Somebody shout new, new victories. I'm going to have a new song. Touch your neighbor and say, get a new song. Everybody stand on your feet with me.